Okay, so hopefully just a short follow-up. <clears throat> I heat treated that last batch uh, twice. Um, first time at 330. And it worked out okay, but it's still a bit uh, a bit dry, a bit rough, a bit uh, a bit difficult. You know, you need a lot of force to uh, thin it down. So I ended up breaking a couple pretty good pieces uh, before I, well, yeah, before I got to to this piece here, which was relatively clear. Hardly any concrete. There's a little bit of a, a rough area up in a, in the tip, but I managed to get a little Clovis out of it, which looks pretty good. Uh, I was thinking about this too. The uh, the fluting that I do. This was a secondary flute where you can see the bulb of percussion right there, very distinctly, and it's very. Uh, very wavy. I don't know if they were made that way, so I, I need to look that up. I don't think they were made that way, so we're, so uh, I'll need to change that a little bit. Um, and then I took a really difficult piece and tried to make a little bird point out of it, and it just became difficult to run flakes on it, so I just narrowed it down and uh, tried to get the base thin but so I ended up also constricting these barbs so I can get in there you know making it very concave in the bottom so I could you know shorten the distance I need to send flakes in but it still didn't work so this is what you get uh, when you're working raw or semi or lightly heat treated stuff so I put it in again, <clears throat> and uh, it went up to 420. Actually, it got hotter than that. I think it was 429, but 420 is a rough estimate, right? That's what I was shooting for. I used a candy thermometer. <clears throat> you know, I drilled a hole here in the in the rim of the turkey roaster, so I could put in a candy thermometer. And as I pulled it out one day. Uh, I separated the <coughs> I separated the the actual probe from the body itself but it seems to work it still works right and actually I think works better because heat is not transferred from the probe to the body of the this plastic body of the thermometer so I'm able to keep it in for a longer period of time so I can keep it in through the whole heat treatment process instead of having to take it in and out. Uh, the other thermometer I had actually melted when it did that. So at least this one is not melting. Okay. Looks kind of funny, but oh well. 88 degrees in the shop today. Anyway, it took it up to 420, and I think it got up to 429 before I shut it off. Anyway, I was going to film this because I, I think I remember saying that uh, I can pop this turtle back off when it's heat treated because I was having difficulty uh, doing anything with it. And I, for, I forgot to film it. I just uh, took it out and hit it, whacked it a couple times and popped off mo most of that turtle back. Uh, I did grind the edges all the way around so that they're very dull. And I found a spot that looked pretty good, struck it, and popped off a big chunk of it. So that's what heat treatment allows you to do, among other things. Okay. So I made, I made a couple more bird points. And well, actually, I made a bird point and a, a miniature of a pedernalis point, which is normally pretty big. Let's see. I don't have a full-size one. I have a Bolverde point. So this is one third the size of a Pedernalis. Anyway, 
this is what you can do with the heat treat. It took me a while to make it, especially the fine flaking. And uh, had to make sure not to break it, but yeah. That's what heat treat allows you to do. And it allows you to create really deep notches and stuff like that. And you compare it to this one here. And I tried my best to get this thin. I really did. It's not, it's not easy on this raw stuff or stuff that's only lightly heat treated. So anyway, I'm going to, well, let's see, maybe I should finish this out. Yeah, I'll just, fit, I'll just try to see what I can do with this. I was going to start a whole new point. But since we're already, I already started on this one, let's finish this one out. I don't know what I'm going to make yet. Okay. So just to, just for starting out, I'm going to use opportunistic platforms. I may start isolating them later. Much, much easier to nap. With the increased softness, there's an increase in the possibility of crushing. I need to get rid of all that mess there. If I don't see an opportunistic platform, I can I can create one. I'm going to need to get rid of this big mass here eventually. Just overshoot it. Just shoot an overshot flake to take all that off. From here, just shh. Yeah, I don't plan on doing overshots. I suppose I could try to, or I suppose I could plan them out. I know what it takes to make an overshot, because I do everything I can to avoid it. And uh, you don't know what to avoid unless you know what it takes to actually do it. Could do, yeah, an overshot would be difficult. I could do it on part of it, but then it would take a lot of this side off. I could, I could try some swiping hits. We need to isolate the platforms better with some with the swiping strikes. If I hit with the corner of the of this billet, it's a lot easier to get in there. It doesn't need to be very isolated. Let's see.
There's a crack in here. I pretty much got rid of it. Yeah. And I'm not sure if this would have been an area of concrete. But if it was, it's pretty easy to nap now. That's one thing I need to do more of is look at what is concrete before and after. I know in general it's easier to nap through tough areas, concrete areas, but it's not always the case. Did I say sometimes or usually? I don't know what I said. Sometimes or usually it's easier to nap through the concrete after heat treating? I don't even know for sure. Trying to figure out why I actually abandoned the method of isolating platforms in favor of opportunistic platforms. Now that I'm going back into trying to isolate them on some of my napping, I haven't done that much on film uh, recently, but I'm doing it off camera just to get practice, to practice up before I film it. And I'm trying to figure out why I abandoned the isolated platform thing other than the fact that it takes time and material to do it. Um, there's got to be another reason. Well, yeah, I, I blow away platforms. Anything that sticks out, it, I tend to crush it completely off and, and not have anything happen except for the removal of the lump on the edge. I tend to just blow off isolated platforms. Yeah, that's one reason, but there's got to be something else too. I think I can adjust to not doing that. I may have studied some artifacts and determined that I did not see any isolated platforms on those artifacts. Now, of course, you won't see an isolated platform if they hit it after they isolate it. But I think there's signs that the platform was isolated if there's like flakes taken off on the sides with a major flake taken off in the middle. I just don't remember seeing that on any, any artifact. I need to look though. It doesn't mean that it's not there. I just don't remember if that's the reason that I abandoned it or it was just procedural where it was just easier for me to do the opportunistic thing. And maybe it conserved a little bit more material. So I've never really had large pieces to work with. Got some very generous friends that are supplying me with some large pieces recently, but in the past I've had to just go and pick up 
flakes from debitage piles and that kind of thing. Uh, I could have spent money on stone, but I've got kids, so I can't really justify spending money somewhere else unless I've got them taken care of first. And stone can become very expensive. Okay. Also, isolating platforms requires that I have, I have skill in uh, knocking off small flakes from the edge. And as you can see, the skill that I have is not that great. That's about as far as I want to go on video with the percussion, direct percussion. That crack still looks like it might give me trouble, but oh well. Okay, I'll switch over. Now I cut down my, my indirect flaker to make some billets to do the swiping hits. Yeah, it works okay. Maybe I should continue with this just to see. Actually doesn't feel heavy enough. Of course, I can I can uh, increase the speed and get the energy up. Doesn't need to be very heavy.
know, I try to isolate these things and make the platform look pretty, but that's not a very good platform. It's got it's got steps right in it. I mean, the angle looks okay, but we'll see. Now, I don't know if it's possible to tell that I isolated that platform. I can see a little bit of uh, a little bit of a, an effect of the flaker here and a little bit of it here, the little crushing and stuff going on on the sides. But that's about it as far as I can tell. I don't know. I need to recognize, I need to be able to recognize that the platforms have been isolated so when I look at the real artifacts I can tell. If I can't determine that then I, it doesn't do any good to look at the real artifacts. I need to know what I'm looking at. can do so much better with the indirect percussion opportunistically than trying to isolate so that's probably why just one method is just better for me than the other For now, anyway. As I get better with the other method, I might just use them interchangeably. But for now... Stick with this. I'll stick with this. Stone is acting a little funny in that area, in this area near the tip. Not sure why. My flaker is also a little bit too small.
Better to whittle it down slowly, I guess. I'm not complaining. All right, I'm getting weird cracks every now and then. See, I do have a larger, no. Yeah, I don't have a, a larger flaker, although I could try to put this behind my knee. Let's see. Barely any room here but let's I'll try that not too bad anyway A lot of shattering going on. Yeah, I may have to stick with the smaller points with this heat treat, which is not a bad thing, but it, it's nice to have a versatile material. I can use just about anything for the small stuff. Okay, that's a nice preform. I'll continue in the next segment. Okay, let's see. This pad is getting kind of worn out. It used to have a nice dome right in the middle. Let's see. I have my other domed pad around here somewhere. I just got really used to using this one. This one's pretty good. It's very comfortable.
Yeah, I watch other nappers do their thing and uh, I think most of them are so much better at creating nice flakes each and every time whereas I have to do a lot of damage control on mine go back and fix stuff but I don't really try to focus on doing nice flakes each and every time until the very end because I think that to me that's just a very tedious way to nap making nice flakes each and every time and then you know the second pass is going to wipe out first pass I mean it doesn't matter because you don't want step fractures but you know the little step fractures don't matter that much Could try to make a Petronellus type out of this, but let's see what else could I make. Hmm. All right, we'll see. I gotta be careful with these strikes. I could end up having to make a really tiny point if I snap this. I'm trying right now to make nice flakes because won't have much opportunity in a little bit when it gets too thin to come back and do damage control. A little bit overly aggressive there. I just got to be very careful now how I deal with that. It's already pretty thin. create a platform that's too isolated I won't have a second shot on this side to get rid of it so I just need a larger area to deal with so I didn't isolate that one very much just in case that flake didn't work I could do the other I could just move over a little bit to do this other flake
there's always a decision what's better try to get try to flatten it from the other side or from the same side I guess it's better to try from the other side as long as you have plenty of mass because it just ends up looking better okay I'm mostly done with the damage control on that one side Pretty much done with the thinning. Just one more thinning pass and that's it. I'm not going to make it too thin because the heat treat is very brittle, obviously. Okay. So yeah, I try to be very careful at this stage with the, the platforms, the flake removals, that sort of thing. that one to go further but that one's okay that's all right okay so now the other side I can still take a few from this side not like that though I'm trying to envision my flit napping as someone new looking at it I'm already used to my haphazard type of approach and then damage control later I'm trying to make I mean I'm trying to yeah I'm trying to make myself see it for the first time if, if that's even possible how it must appear Just now tuning in. You know, why am I a 10 year experience napper making an edge so, so uh, seemingly chaotic like that? Well, one of my aims is just to get rid of thick spots, and sometimes I take too much material off. The other is I really don't care at this stage. Yeah, that tip, even though it's a nice uh, color and there's a differenti differentiation in color, it's not good material. that nasty chalky stuff nice color though but you try to get a, a nice strong platform and it just ends up becoming powdery crushing way too easy and I'll probably end up just removing it the uh, nasty stuff yeah, but it's not too bad now
Okay. So now to make the other side look nice. Well, you wouldn't have to try to make it look nice now if you had made it look nice earlier. Yes, but trying to make it look nice and thin it down and try to explain it and all that at the same time. Hmm. I suppose I could show off that way. But I'm just napping it like I would normally nap if I wasn't filming. Except for the fact that I keep it thicker for the film, for the video. Just so I don't break it. I don't care if I break it off camera. Keeping it thicker is easy. I can do that. That's easy. I can do that and chew gum at the same time. So to speak. Come on. What are steel tools good for if they can't pop off those little step fractures? Okay, let's see. I might be able to drive a long flake through there. Good enough. A little bit of mess there, that's okay. I drove a, a long flake and it just barely caught the end of that. It wiped out all those metal marks from the steel. Right, well, most of them anyway. I can probably do some more thinning later. Anyway, I need to get rid of some of this shattery stuff there. The new word of the day, shattery. Come on, come on. I just want a little off the edge. Don't give me any trouble. I shouldn't have to take the edge back a whole lot to move it toward that side. could bevel it, but I don't even want to take off that much. Just a little tiny bit. That way I don't lose the width. Never know when you need width to drive a flake. All right. Drive one of those ever important last cosmetic flakes. Never know when you're going to need some width to do that. All right. Yeah, because I, I want to get rid of that shattery area. Okay. Just to make sure everything is perfect. I don't want any little pieces of chert embedded in the aluminum to screw it all up. What it does is it prevents the platform from making good contact and it doesn't produce a nice flake. I want it to produce a nice smooth flake and nothing, nothing out of the ordinary, just a nice smooth flake. No excessive ripples or no platform crushings. You can still get a flake even if you crush a platform sometimes, but the flake's not going to be nice and smooth in most cases. Maybe short, maybe highly rippled, it may be off to one side. 
all that good stuff. Is it getting any better? I don't even know. Seems like it might be. It's getting flatter. But as far as the aesthetics of it being smooth, I don't know. And why am I worried about that? Just had a lot of questions lately on how to produce nice flakes. Everyone's having trouble producing nice flakes. They all have, you know, step fracture problems or uh, not long enough. Not smooth enough, that sort of thing. You just have to be very careful. Use all the experience you have to create these last cosmetic type flakes. The kind of concentration and determination that will wear you out in the first half of making the point. If you wear yourself out in the first half, just like a, like a football game, Second half is going to look like crap. All right, that's good enough. Yeah, good enough. Let's see. I suppose that's why they have so many players on these teams so they can put in fresh guys every time. All right. Too bad we can't do that. I can't putt. Take my brain out and put in a fresh one. I gotta conserve the conserve the old brain as I'm doing this. Pace myself. I guess that's the word. You gotta pace yourself. Well, at least I do. Save. Save the energy for the final stretch. As it looks so nice when you can do the final stretch faster than everybody else. Faster and better than everybody else. Okay. Good, that one traveled pretty good. I need to do some plain view no, some first views. I I, mean, I don't think I've done a single first view on film. I might have a material candidate for the first view with this stuff, right? Right, okay. What are we gonna do? What am I going to make? Let's see. for one of these. I could tell before I brought that out that I wasn't going to have enough width. I just wanted to see. Yeah, I'm even more narrow than this one. I don't know, I'll just put some notches in and hope for the best. Okay, let's see. I was going to do a continuation of that notching, part two, 
nothing but notching but I still have to practice with my brand new notcher this is a vertical pressure flaker I think it's still too long this is a nail just driven in uh, of course I drilled the hole first of course and I drilled the nail in but I can I can punch down or yeah I can push down with pressure at the bottom of a notch I just haven't practiced with it yet so I want to practice a little bit with it before I break it out and do the second part of that nothing but notching video because if you do a vertical uh, vertical pressure flaking you can get the notches much deeper all right uh, uh, yeah I'm not even talking about uh, punch work you can do vertical punch work too all right let's see. I'm, I'm not gonna make these notches too narrow right or ridiculously narrow I'm gonna leave myself some room Immediately, that's a thick spot, but I like leaving it thick there. I don't know why. Every time I try to thin it down, I end up losing way too much off the base. You know, it just gets shorter and shorter and shorter. And I still haven't got a thin base or a thin stem area. With heat tree, you don't have to worry too much about it. Like obsidian, you can plow through and really, really, uh, get through those thick spots as long as you don't stall it as long as you have a good angle on that edge to push from you can drive through thick spots I put most of my pressure on that side of the notch I don't want to put pressure like that was a very high intensity pressure flake come on come on come on on this side I never put a high intensity pressure flake on this side because I don't want to blow out I don't want to blow off that uh, barb but you can see that dished out a nice bulb that thinned out thinned down that area so the next flake is going to be fairly easy Yep, I'm just gonna do the same thing on this side. Put all my pressure here on the inside, never toward the barb. See if I can pop out a nice big old dish. Okay, yep, nice. And in a perfect world, I'll remember what I did for this side. Do the same thing. I hit it. I'm at a thick spot right away. I didn't send in those preliminary thinning flakes like I should have. Oh well. Let me see. It'll still work. I have to widen this a little bit. Okay, here we go. So that did send in a nice thinning flake here. This is a this is such a nice material that I don't have to worry too much. Okay, should be more domed. Most of my pressure is on the inside of that notch, even though at this stage you also got to be careful not to wipe out the, the ear of the stem. I'm going to center with that one. 
And okay, I can start angling inward more now. Oops. That one released too soon there. Let's try again for the setup. Yeah, I walked it in just a little bit. Walking it in means I'm using the whole edge from bottom all the way to the top. I, I walk it in means I'm, I'm using a lot of the edge of the tool. But yeah, it's a very thick spot. I'm trying to get a nice pop out, but it's starting to stall. Because yeah, I'm just too thick in that area. All right, we'll continue on the next segment. Okay, good good opportunity to figure out how to unstall that stall you know, the easiest way is just to expand the notch we'll go to a more narrow flaker expand the notch somewhat I should have sent in a thinning flake I could probably send in, yeah, I could send in a thinning flake right now. Let's see. Why is it so hard to take your own advice? It's because you're not really thinking. Well, I'm not really thinking uh, procedure. Every time I'm just looking at opportunities. I think that's the reason why it's so hard to take my own advice. I just showed you guys how to send in a, a large flake to thin down the area before you start, and I didn't even do it. I just started going inward. A lot of times it's because, you know, I guess it doesn't matter too much. I'll figure out a way to do it eventually. But just as a matter of procedure, I should really be doing everything like I said I should be doing. All right. I'm trying to get that to thin down now as a damage control measure and I'm getting every area except that area. I thin down this one. I don't need to thin down this side. I need it, I need it to go this way. Still didn't do it. All right. The joys of damage control Okay, so I sent in a flake from here. It did pretty good. It went up here to do, jumped over something there. I don't know what that was. And then continued up. It might be thin enough now that I can pop off, pop off a flake at the bottom of that notch. Okay use a thinner flaker so I can get more concentrated force and I, I pressed off on a thin area first this area is thinner than that area this area is thinner than that area so I pressed off a flake on that side first it didn't really go very far but it's right there at least it's a little bit of something Right next to it, it just kind of crushed. I 
I don't know. Let's. Yeah, I'm just gonna try each side. See how it works. That one wasn't too bad. I actually don't need to go much further now. Okay. I got myself set up. Maybe I should use the thicker flaker. Now that the thinner flaker has given me a good platform. I don't even know if that... Yeah, I guess that was the thinner. Yeah, okay. Now the thicker one. Okay, let's see. I was hoping for a bigger pop out than that. Yeah, like that one. All right, let's see. Alternate the final pop-outs. Final pop-out down this way and final pop-out down that way. How's that? Okay. Yeah, that's good enough. Not really a big pop-out. What do you think? Should I go deeper than that? I'm actually a little bit too narrow on the stem neck. Side profile looks good. I'm just going to finish up. Everything looks good. I'm just going to pressure flake the edges and call it good. if I don't mess up the pressure flaking. Yep, just as I mess up the pressure flaking. So just short flakes. I think I can handle the short flakes. Quit going for those fancy long ones.
haven't even determined what it is yet, but I'm gonna call it a bandy, right? It's starting to look like a bandy. Bandy type arrowhead. Uh, at lateral dart point. With a bandy, I can make these serrations bigger, a lot bigger if I wanted to. And for now, they're just a little bitty. I'm not even looking at the other side. I just want to even this up and create a good a good uh, edge for the next pass on this other side. I forget if these are needle tip, but I don't I don't think they are. Okay, so I don't, even, I don't even have to do anything else. I really don't need to make a final pass on the other side. But I will. I want to thin down that I'm not doing opportunistic platforms. I'm spacing these out so that the flakes will look evenly spaced. If I was doing this with uh, platform opportunities, uh, the flakes would look kind of random or more random than they are right now. I, I did want to, I want to get some of these evenly spaced. I, because I do, I do like that look. Now, whether they were doing like that on the bandies, I don't know. Can't remember. Well, you got a book. Just look at the book. I don't like fumbling with the book during the video. Besides, everybody and their brother asked me, what book was that? What book was it? And then me with my compulsive disorder, I've got to go look at the book and then answer the question instead of saying, go back into the other videos and look. It's the same book as I use on everything. book are you talking about <laughs> yeah I can hear I can just hear it. all right so that's it maybe a little bit more on the very bottom yeah could go deeper with the notches right let's see just for grins and giggles, as I used to say back in the day, they don't say that anymore.
Maybe because people don't do a lot of grinning and giggling anymore. Everybody's so serious. A little bit deeper, maybe a little bit of an upward swing. If I go any further, I'm going to stall it. So there you go. Okay. Oh, good. A little step at the end of the pressure flake came off. All right. Are there ways to crunch those off? There are ways to crunch them off. You can go in here and you know, try to use an abrader or some other piece of sandstone or something to get in there and just kind of push on the top of them sometimes you can break off pieces of those step fractures you can also go up and down and back and forth and hope that does it or take a little exacto knife or something or a utility knife and try to pick off all those little fingernail step fractures all right let's see how about if i weigh it and measure it <laughs> i got a comment that uh, some, some people think that's, think that's funny what's so funny about it all right one and a half i'm going to do the width to thickness ratio okay just leave me alone. Let's see, that's a quarter inch. All right, that's a quarter inch. Let's see. Yep. So is it going to be that easy? It is. Six to one. Inch and a half by quarter inch, six to one. That's my typical. And I, I call that a bandy point. Even though it might not be, it might be too long for one. Let's see, how long is it? Three and one eighth. So it's within my favorite size range. And yes, I'm going to weigh it. Why do you weigh them? Just so we can know how much these at lateral dart points are supposed to weigh. How, why else? All right. 276 grains. Okay. This is definitely an that'll dark point style. 276 grains gives you an idea. I know some of you guys use that no, 250 grain arrowheads for arrows, but that's in the in the archaeological record, that's way too big for an arrow point. True arrow point. That's in the atlatl dark point size range. So maybe you guys are saying, well, I don't want to weigh it because I don't want to know that stuff. I don't care as long as it makes the arrow fly nicely. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter that much. But it does in context if you want to make something that you want to practice that is um, taken from history, right? You want to practice with historical items and see how they work. Then you're going to need to know that stuff. All right, so that's it.
turn on the light so maybe I can get some shadows on this. The edges are not perfectly straight. I could have pressure flaked that a little bit more. Got rid of that step fracture. I got I got enough mass in there, right? To uh, dull that edge and try to get get that step fracture out of there. But I'm going to leave it in. Okay. fan blows a lot of dust back up okay there you go